Welcome to this event. It was a great pleasure for me to accept the invitation to facilitate. Uh, my name is Orada, for those of you that don't know me. And uh, I've been invited by the Dreamweaving uh, team to facilitate this presentation today. And um, really nice to see a lot of people gathered here and already engaging with the material that's on the board. We, uh, or the Dreamweaving team had offered uh, and made available the option of a tra uh, Tamil translation as the presentation goes. I'd just like to check out if there's anyone here today that would like the Tamil translation to be offered during the presentation. If anyone here wants that, can you please raise your hand and give me a little sign? So I'm not seeing uh, any need for that right now. If there uh, is at any point, please um, let us know that. Um, we have um, today uh, one and a half hours time and uh, there's going to be uh, initially uh, 20 minute uh, short presentations on uh, the different initiatives of the Dreamweaving um, team. And after that, there'll be a short uh, five minute question and answer session, uh, followed by another presentation for probably about 20 minutes uh, on the Dreamweaving. And uh, after that, another short question and answer, and then time for open discussions. After that, time permitting, um, we have uh, prepared three tables on the various Dreamweaving initiatives that are happening. That includes the self-education program, uh, as well as the dream catching and dream weaving. There's a lot of uh, areas for involvement and commitment and participation. And uh, so today you'll be invited to uh, look into which areas you would like to participate in and sign up for that also. Um, I also wanted to mention that there um, are two photographers here today and um, if anybody is uncomfortable with that, uh, then also raise your hand and we'll make sure that you're not in the images. <laughs> Someone's waving, but I think not at this. <laughs> okay, super. Um, no. Christo, that was not related to this. One in the middle. Okay, fine. All right, so we're going to do our best to make sure that, um, that you're left out of the picture and otherwise we'll uh, remove it later. And uh, with that, I'd like to invite Bavia to come here and give us an introduction to the dream weaving. Thank you, Arada. I was supposed to introduce myself, but she did it already. Um, I'm Bhavya. Thank you so much for giving your precious Sunday to be here. We know lots is happening, and we've had to do this on a Sunday, and thank you so much for coming. Um, can we go next? Uh, welcome to the presentation. Uh, this is how it's going to take place. It's in three parts. First, we're going to introduce what is this word dream we weaving that we've been talking about. Uh, there have been a lot of different interpretations, a lot of different meanings to it over the years, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Second, we're going to talk about the Dream Weaving Initiative, uh, which is where the three different programs, self-education, dream catching, are under. And the third thing we're going to do is initiate a new Dream Weaving project of 2024, brought to you by the Next Generation team called Build to Envision. Next. Um, so dream weaving, what we know today, is a design process that's evolved as a collaborative, collaborative practice where different designers, architects, and planners come together, present their ideas, and over, over a time period, begin to weave these ideas together, borrowing from each other, sharing with each other, so that it becomes one or maybe two weaved collective designs that can then be built or presented to the community. So we know the Crown Ways 2022 was a dream weaving project from the design perspective. But what it has 
come about as an evolutionary process which started as dream catching which was which was a space where people to come and share what their aspirations or dreams are for oroville this evolved into dream space where these sh- these these thoughts were presented in different spaces over the years which has evolved into dream weaving they all still exist in some form or another but dream weaving is is the result of what has happened since 2005 actually next please and why why do we why are we so passionate about this it's because we recognize dream weaving or this kind of process to be acting in a space that is somewhat central to the very different approaches and perspectives we have towards manifesting the city the the city the earth needs and whereas there are many other such initiatives and programs across orville that function at this center space dream weaving wants to be one of those and to help keep growing and maintaining this center space and that's where that's what we all hold dear and as a core core value and that's what we want to take forward next um so this next what has happened in this evolutionary process is now what we call the dream weaving initiative you can count it as a fourth little thing of that arrow and the dream weaving initiative was started in august 2003 2023 when david omar and mona presented uh, the community meeting at unity pavilion and there are four programs under it presently dream catching self education clan body and dream weaving and these four programs are envisioned to be held together by some young faces so there we go <laughs> uh next please uh we're going to have a short presentation from each of the programs just so you can uh figure out what's been happening and what the aims and processes are who is talking tanisha can you please come up Okay. Uh that's not Tanisha, that's David. <laughs> The, he- the hesitation that you're noticing is because actually one of the things we've been trying to do is to pass the baton to the next generation. So I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to be standing here yet again um, after all these years. But anyway, no problem. Um, so the dream catching, as many people know, started back in 2005. And uh, there were quite a few years of trying to collect the various dreams, pearls, ultimately aiming towards mother's dream like we're all here to build mother's dream and so the dream catching was envisaged as a process where people can come together and try and step beyond the personal egoic uh, uh, needs that we think we have as individuals and really sort of aim higher to try and call the vision as a collective in a circle so that was the process that we've been exploring on and off over the years um And so from that did you want to add anything to that? Um two of our dream catchers have offered to read out some of the pearls that came up over the last few months. Thank you David. So the, this is from August to November 2023 after the last presentation we had made uh we had these sessions in the morning 6 to 8 in the morning on different rooftops and we collected several um, what we call pearls these are kind of decantation of our uh morning sessions they're not brainstorming sessions they're a very safe and non-confrontational space <clears throat> and everybody is welcome to come 
So we had several different people coming in and out. Some were coming on every session, some were coming on different times. And we've just selected a few uh, pearls just to give an overview. We have a, we have a table there, which uh, where eventually we will be sitting there and if anybody has uh, questions or want to go deeper into it, we can, but today we're just giving you a little taste of it. And so Tanisha and uh, um, Kaya are going to just read out some of them. Thank you. Also, just to clarify, the hesitation is not at all about the process. It's about holding this mic, which is terrifying. The process was lovely. It was every Monday at 6 a.m. and it was one of the best starts to the week. Is, is this? Could we develop a set of guidelines for the transformation of existing structures and spaces that allows for the evolution whilst respecting the initial offering? That's um, weaving as opposed to unweaving and connecting as opposed to unconnecting. How to design a city with zero waste where nothing can be considered as waste. Our tourists coming to Oroville, pilgrims of a certain kind, how can we leverage that to our advantage? If Orvillians themselves are the ultimate product of Oroville, then the built environment of Oroville is effectively a byproduct of our collective processes as we can clearly see being manifested today. So the cohesiveness of our urban forms and spaces will naturally evolve as we do. And in the meantime, the city is a perfect expression of where we are as a collective. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dream Catching team, for giving us this short brief. Um, the next program we're going to talk about is the self-education program, which was initiated in 2023 of August. A lot has happened from this team, and they're just going to share two minutes worth, which is not enough, but yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about the self-education program. Uh, is there anyone in this assembly that went, came to the first wave? Okay, so a uh, self-education program is made to give knowledge to the resident of, of Oroville about the topics and the challenges of what it is to make a city, how to build a city. So um, uh, it's a program to learn about all the characteristics of uh, urban design and uh, so then when, as a resident, you're asked to uh, make decision or uh, to contribute to the, the collective project, uh, you can have a better rational uh, idea about what you're talking about. The approach uh, is individual and collective. So in the program, we have uh, individual uh, work uh, and then we have uh, groups of uh, people together and then sharing. So it's, it's a kind of dream weaving of uh, learning on the topic. Uh, the approach, so we, are, we had several approach. We had some uh, artistic uh, practices um, with line of lights, uh, with Bavio. Uh, we had some uh, ATB work, uh, we had some um, academic learning, uh, all sorts of different approaches to help people to make their own learning through everything that we are presenting. Okay, so um so we had um, conversations with the team of the dream weaving process and identified some topics. Um, 
spatial justice, values in urban form, density and diversity, connectivity and access, art and culture. Um, these are fairly complex topics. Um, they cover a lot of territory in a more in a broader way. It's not the technical details about how which screw to use where and all those things, but really more like what is the community, how do we want to think about the city, um, what ideas um, are important to us, and most of all, how can we learn about those ideas. So the idea was really not to um, give a lecture and tell this is that and so forth, but really find processes which allow everybody to self-educate in a group. And um, so going from the individual to the collective, um, we facilitated that process. And so it's a discovery process which was going on. And, um, and these were some of the outcomes which um, came. You can also see them there. And you can, after the presentation, come to us and ask us how it was in detail. Um, but the in a jit, in like two sentences, was really like starting with reflections of how you think about those topics, then discussing them, and then visualizing them, then structuring them, synthesizing them, um, formulate some thesis, present them, revisit them, and so forth. So it was a two months long process to really go a little bit deeper into how the participants think about those topics from their own point of view and not from a teaching point of view. That was the most important thing there. And, um, and we, I, I, I was very, very pleasantly surprised about the outcome. And um, I'm happy to, to talk more about it after the presentation when we are at the desk there. Thank you, Krista. Um, the third program that we want to talk about is the client body. This uh, program does not have a team yet because it's uh, envisioned to be an emerging kind of aspect that would come as a result of the other programs. And it would act as, it would be of, comprised of a representative body that uh, that's including the self-education participants, dream catchers, dream weavers, and other members of the community who are willing to take this up and represent what we are as Oroville to uh, larger planning processes and decision makers. And finally, the fourth program, the dream weaving design process. Um, the aim is to be at that central white space and foster a collaborative space within that, where we can explore and create different ways in which we can de design and build what we envision for the city that the earth needs. Um, it comes, as I explained, it comes together by weaving the different ideas that designers have over time. And what we want to share with you here is the next generation team. We continue to be mentored by David, Mona, and Omar, and they have handed us the stick as young faces <laughs> to take this forward. So please welcome uh, the rest of the Dreamweaving team, of which I am one member. And we're going to introduce ourselves and then take the presentation forward from there. Hey, um, I'm Henrik, and I was also part of the Dream Weaving in uh, 22. And for me, that was a very meaningful experience, and I was very glad when I was asked, as one of the younger generation, um, to help to make this happen again. So that's why I'm here. Good evening. My name is Radhika. I was also a participant in the previous Dream Weaving process. And when I was approached to be part of the upcoming dream weaving process as a process holder. It was very inspiring because there was a calling to be able to feel that center space, that eye of the storm. So that's why I'm part of this team. Hi, I'm Shivangi. Uh, so same for me, I was part of the dream weaving 2022, the Crown Road dream weaving. And for me, it was very, very empowering and enriching to be part of that process. And I really feel and like uh, aim that this kind of a collaborative process, dream weaving over many iterations and development becomes a collaborative planning tool for Auroville. So with that as an inspiration, I'm here as the dream weaving project team, one of the members. Uh, next slide. So. Pause for five minutes for some clarifications. 
If anyone has any questions on what has been discussed and presented so far, now is the time to raise those. And I have a mic here and which I'll be passing around, but whoever would like to ask something, please come forward unless I can reach you easily. <laughs> Hi. Is it meant to be always related to the building a city or used for other purposes? Um, if I understood your question correctly, it's we're trying to look at this these big, big questions we have of urban development. What is what is uh, building something? What is the development? What is designing, planning, etc.? So it's it is aimed towards those topics, but no building is not the only part of it, uh, and that's why there are the programs like Dream Catching or Self Education that are looking at what does it really take to bring something to the ground. We need to be able to have our ideas that are not bound by anything. We need to be able to understand key aspects of these challenges through uh, what is connectivity, what is density, et cetera. And then we also need to have a group of people who have the skills and the ability and the interest to be able to design and put those things together. So I don't know if you guys want to add anything. Yes. Um, maybe w what is also a little bit in the room with that is that the Citizens Assembly team was part of the um, 2022 Dream Weaving. And the Citizens Assembly team aimed towards also uh, taking up any topic, any possible topic. And um, so this is not so much the scope of dream weaving, but it was the scope of uh, citizens assembly, um, which is not so much uh, active at the moment, but hopefully will pick up again. Does that answer your question? Eric, does that answer your question? Hi. Um, does the Dreamweaving team have a specific topic to work on this time? I mean, the original one had the crown. Have you decided on a topic that you're going to work upon? So that's the next part of the presentation. We, we paused <laughs> before that. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Right. Looks like we can then just move on to the uh, presentation on dream weaving, which will be approximately 20 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, rightly, like we already said, that the next part of the presentation is where we introduce this new project. So, dream weaving 2024 built to envision. So while the aim of the dream weaving itself is to bring in a collaborative space so that we can bring our ideas together and envision the city, uh, the dream weaving 2024 built to envision particularly is focused on the aims of demonstrating a collective willingness to build the city, uh, to depolarize the urban discussion in a physical space. And in order to do this, what we uh, envision the project to be is to create a temporary structure which will inform the permanent. Next. So the location that is chosen to do this project built to envision is right where we are right now. So if you see the project, uh, the little pointer in the screen, so that's the place where the screen is placed right now. So. Yeah, so this is exactly where we uh, plan the project to happen. So what we propose is because there is an existing urban magnet to this place. This is a place where we all come for different activities at different times of the day for different functions. So we would like to see how we can create an urban facade. So with the solar kitchen, PTDC and the kiosks around this side of the uh, road and the other side, the library and the residential building of Kailash. So if there can be a connected space around it and if we can make this urban facade one is to one scale along with a residential zone line of force. So if you see the one down there, that's a part of line of force that has been marked. So if we could do a one is to one temporary structure so that we can start envisioning the scale. So that's, and then the once we have a structure like this, there's gonna be a ripple effect of it, which is gonna create a whole space around it for envisioning and 
bringing more of our ideas to the ground. Next slide. So we envision this project to be structured in three stages, which is design, build, and activate. So design is the stage where we ideate and refine our designs to bring in the collective vision where we talk about the beauty in the Orville's landscape, where we have our functionality, everything coming together through the weaving process. And build is the stage where we ground this design to a constructible technique, which will be temporary dismantleable structures on an actual human one-to-one -one scale. And the last part of the activate, we have in a way begun already we're all here talking about this, and thank you once again for, to all of you for coming. Uh, so we've already begun the activate stage, and eventually this activate stage will include uh, insertion of some urban activities, activity, uh, like, I mean, people have various activities that we have around at different locations. So if there could be some which could happen in this one is to one temporary structure, and some events that could be there, and rest we leave it to the dream weavers to eventually work with what activities would be there to so that we can bring alive this urban facade and this one is to one line of force building. So yeah, the focus of this whole project is on the build while the design and the activate uh, stages will support this build because it is, uh, in a way, we felt it is very important to bring this uh, physical manifestation and create this collective energy of creation so we really felt that this is what is the focus of this whole project. And which will, again, I will repeat, will be done by the temporary and dismantleable structures. Okay. As we were looking at the process and the project structure, we were also really hoping that this time the participation expands. So at various stages, there are different, these different phases are not chronological, but they are overlapping. So design, when it starts, we will have designers, architects, planners, but also focus group where there are representatives of different sectors in our society. There will be randomly selected residents. We hope to have self-education participants and dream catchers representatives, all of them to be part of the design. And then as it progresses, the build also starts overlapping where the builders, craftspeople, artists, hands-on volunteers, they all start becoming part of the team. And similarly, activity holders also start becoming part of the team early on. Next. So we came together as a new dream weaving team last August. And we started studying the previous processes that were done, uh, taking our learnings, brainstorming, and taking them ahead by meeting our mentors from previous Dreamweaving facilitation team, uh, different subject experts and subject enthusiasts. We visited several sites around to be able to see how we can create this kind of urban magnet, uh, finally coming to this site for this year. Uh, we met facilitators, we started developing the brief, we started meeting participants. So all of this has been an evolving process and we are here now to share this with you. Next. And the next steps for us is to finalize the brief, start reaching out for fundraising, finalize the process by looking at the practicality of it, how, what are the formalities needed to implement, um, and we also hope to do various community pop-up boards and as much as possible on site where larger community who are not necessarily part of the participation, they can come and they can just put up some uh, vision board and have a dream catching on site, perhaps an intensive self-education program if needed. And with all of this as base and uh, collecting the resources needed, we will initiate the design process and kickstart the actual weaving. Next. So after a few weeks, the architects, designers, planners would come up with their first design. They will be presenting it. 
and the next day there will be co-creating cafe where all the other participants they will sit together on a design table they will exchange ideas develop the design evolve the design which the designers will take back integrate them and after few weeks again bring them back to the weave 2 followed by co-creating cafe and at this point we would have a larger community update then as we progress towards weave 3 and co-creating cafe 3 the designers are strongly encouraged to start forming team with the builders or the other participants who would be part of building and activating the project so it's already here we have the overlap of the build phase go back go back okay yeah and then community updates and then finally we reach towards a dream woven to that center space integrating all of these various approaches and perspectives it can be one design or it could also be complementing a complementary several designs in different zones of the site and then this would come down to ground the dream um yes already said uh, so with the uh, third weave we would invite already the builders makers uh, construction experts and maybe it would need a fourth weave or to extend that process to to we are ready to go into construction and this is just to illustrate how that process um what come about construction detailing uh, quotations and budgeting site preparation um building the temporary structures uh, improving the landscaping around it um next and and this slide is also just to kind of illustrate from our side how we hope that this vision will be taken up by by activity holders or whoever is inspired to to fill these spaces with life um probably with events activities installations public art urban discussions yeah exchange spaces next and um so this is the timeline that we roughly outline uh, for now um we will have to see how it will change uh, in the development um so the initi initiation of the process we hope maybe even to be able to start in the birthday week at the end of february um but um maybe in the beginning of march or mid march and and then we hope to de develop a rhythm of these weaves and co-creating cafes which would be every 3 to 4 weeks and this is a little bit more time than we gave in the last um dream weaving in 22 um we hope to make it a little more um bearable for the participants to be able to show up for for the dream weave even besides their other uh, responsibilities so in in june we project roughly and that we could start building and um maybe start finishing something at the end of august september so that the activate of that space could could start maybe already mid mid august uh, next so here here's a rough overview of all the um roles and and possibilities of participation and volunteering um that we see to to kind of um make this possible as a community endeavor so from the participation in the design itself um to help organizing the events uh, facilitation of the events uh, fundraising for the events the spaces that we need for these events um then for the build itself and we hope that um for the construction we can um go mostly without paid labor and and actually make this a community effort to make this happen so uh, we hope that this is a good chance for people to come together and and offer their their la labor um and and this will also go along with documentation accounting fundraising uh, and and for the activate um of course the activity holders and event initiators and and then it's also about uh, evaluating what we have actually done to also make this process um 
a viable contribution to the um, master planning and detailed development planning. Yeah, so um, here over to the side of the table, we have small forms where we hope that people use the chance to sign up and, and maybe already give an indication in which um, part they would want to involve themselves. Next. Um, this, is, this marks the end of our presentation, but uh, the beginning of what we hope is a very exciting process for the community. It's definitely been for us so far. Um, we, again, we'd I like to emphasize that the way we've kind of developed this project cannot really requires all of us to put some energy, put some time if we're interested and inspired. So yes, please visit our desks, overload those two over there. <laughs> um, and before we end and hand, hand it back to Arada, we just want to mention that this event and coming to here involved a lot more people than you saw on the stage today. We have the facilitating team, technical team, video, photography, um, food and snacks, the different programs that are here on this day. But before this, we've met countless architects, planners, designers. We've met um, different subject experts and enthusiasts. We've met a lot of a lot of people who've helped us get here. And uh, many faces in this crowd, you're part of this. And we hope that the next time we present, there'll be many, many more faces too. Uh, with this, we'd like to hand it back to Arada. Thank you so much for giving us your Sunday. So, uh, Sorry about that. So um, we've managed to stay really well on time with this presentation, which is nice because it allows us now to have more time for open discussions. Um, anyone who has questions related to um, what was just shared with you, you could do that right now. And um, after that, there's probably about 15 to 20 minutes uh, for an open round of discussion, which uh, can take place right around here as well as, um, of course, as Bobby already mentioned, the tables on self-education and uh, dream weaving. So, and the sign-up table. So, uh, does anyone right now have questions? Yes, I have a question. That's, that's me. Yeah, hi. Um, what I understood from the presentation was that the activation is the third step um, did I understand right that the person that the um, users of this building and this design would inhabit um, after the design and construction? Did I understand correctly? So yes, they inhabit at the I mean when the space is ready, but then they become part of the process. While, while we said the third we, when we are making the project teams, so along with the building experts or builders, artisans, also the activating uh, related members, which could be acti activity holders and all, already become part of the participation process. And to just say like what I said before, activate also means to keep this space alive in different uh, ways and we find that in some way the activate has already begun even though the structure has not come so it does i mean the actual activation happens after the one is to one scale structures are done but then it has also begun so yeah. so actually what i didn't understand is um it sounds then that the design is going to not have the um uh not have the inputs of the functions from the actual people who are going to use it. So, you know, when we step in with, oh, I would like to do X, Y, Z in this place, we're stuck with having to fit it into a design rather than would there be a possibility to actually look at what would be the functionalities already along with the designers. 
Yeah, actually, uh, we are addressing that and we want to bring it forth uh, early on. That's why the architects, designers are encouraged to f start looking at who the activity holders are going to be. And um, they would start forming teams with that. And then we would have these co-creating cafe where they would share these ideas. So, and if there are no activity holders as such, but we would have these uh, community uh, pop-up boards that we would like to do and where the larger part of the community would share their visions, which will go to the design team. And anything else? And just to add, last thing to that is that within the process of dream weaving, focus groups are given a very large importance where such perspectives would come in. So if we have we are planning out the focus groups and we would like to add people who are interested to hold these activities within the activation phase and inform the, the needs of that activity to the designers. And that will be present throughout the design process through the focus groups as well. So you have the uh, ideation and sharing of ideas on pop-up boards or through dream catching before the design. You have during the design able to uh, participate by providing focus group inputs. And after the design you have through the activation uh, sharing the activity or event that you want to hold in that space. Hopefully that answers the question. And also through the dream catching, which will happen on site, and perhaps if needed, a self education program for which is site specific that can also bring in activity holders already in this circle. So, as we progress, we would be sending out calls for these, and whoever would like to be activity holder. They are more than welcome to join the team and be part of the co-creating cafes and evolve the design together. Maybe one more thing to add. Um, so we are also formulating a brief, which will be informed by the um, master plan, uh, perspective master plan, and um, is also already informed through our different expert meetings. So there will also be a, a certain amount of suggestions of what kind of activities make sense in the space. For example, um, to, to not have too much uh, consumerist outlook of um, what kind of, kind of activities come up here. So this is also part of the process. It's a very simple question. <clears throat> I just didn't understand in the presentation. I think you mentioned something about dismountable temporary buildings. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so the idea of doing this is through temporary structures. So like we said in the beginning, the aim, one of the very strong aim is to create a temporary that would inform the permanent. So uh, at this moment, uh, what we feel is also important is to bring into a physical space the different ideas that we have of the city of Oroville or the different uh, urban discussions that we can bring to a physical space. So yes, what the whole project about dream weaving is to create a design for the temporary one-to-one -one, uh, dismantleable structures. And uh, going maybe a little bit specific to how, why we're doing dismantable and temporary, it's uh, because of the wonderful flexibility that such a technique offers. We have so many people in this community who are experts and have a lot of experience with building things that can be changed around, uh, taken down, put back up. Uh, uh, how do we deal with the weather? So we're trying to bring in this expertise, expertise as well. While we're saying that this is not what 
will be forever. This is, we're gonna experiment with this, we're gonna change it around as we need, and then we're gonna build the permanent with what we learned. So that's the, that's the crux of the dismantable and temporary. It's so, so that we can play with it as much as possible. Yeah, I want to thank you for your presentation. Sounds very inspiring. I'm just wondering, I see the timeline that you presented. How are you going to manage to bring all this forward in the present situation? Are you going to work with the TDC of the GB? Yeah. The, so the timeline is really, uh, in a way, the time that a process would take. A lot of it would depend on the scope of participation. So things will be uh, adapted to the scope, to the participation and um, you know how many people get involved. Then the second part about the uh, TDCs is that we, in a way, we have to uh, recognize what's there. And that's why in the map also you must have seen there is the radial mart and line of force mart. So we have to recognize that as context. And we are, we've been reaching out to them so that, you know, it's not like we start something and it's bulldozed over. But uh, we will see. We hope to do as much as reaching out and bring together all of these different perspectives and approaches. And we hope to create something together. <laughs> Could you come here? Thank you. I think this is a good segue to my question. Uh, with all due respect to my faith and the optimism and with very limited knowledge, how are you going to mitigate the roadblocks you envisioned from the previous dreamweaving process? And what roadblocks do you envision with this process? Um, thanks for your question. Uh, one, one thing that's slightly different uh, of, between this dreamweaving and the last was the intent of the project. Last time, we, the brief was to develop a set of ideas that we can give to an external body to develop the detailed development plans. And the roadblocks there were different according to that. What the roadblocks we uh, envision are first and foremost, um, do we, will we have enough support from the community members to do this from the ground up? And the second, uh, like Sophie also asked, how do we navigate the current scenario that is constantly changing? And that's, um, we're navigating that presently as we speak. For now, we, we don't have the full answer, but what we can say is that as process holders of dream weaving, we are ready to take the steps needed. We're ready to talk to the people needed and maintain that center space and bring people towards it. And that's the motivation with which we are initiating the project. Um, there are a lot of roadblocks that maybe we can't mention because we don't know, but these are the two main ones that we're looking at fixing and look, yeah, and solving as soon as possible. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, there are two short questions. Um, you have a large group of people of goodwill. Many of them are not even Aurelians, and. I think you should open up your one activate thing, which is fundraising. Um, if people come forward and want to support you, um, is there a clear open channel to do so in terms of money? So yeah, we are starting this new uh, donation channeling group and uh, Um, and that's why we are just leaving uh, a form there for people to um, give their contact so that we can reach out to them once we have this figured out because it's not as clear yet. Um, you, you couldn't have a hundi here 
and somebody helps. <laughs> Would that be objectionable? I don't think so. Anyhow, whatever it is, I think we should hit the iron when it's hot. There are so many people here who come forward, come to help. And now you're reaching back out to them. That's one my thing. We are losing a chance here. Anyhow, that's Frederick. And the second one, if you go out, they ask you, OK, 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 but who are you? <laughs> uh, coming, let's say you have a visiting card. Give it to Who are you? There's nothing on it here. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say it's an activity and it's wonderful and I congratulate you. But um, are you uh, refresh my memory? Did you were ever installed by the residence assembly? I don't remember. Are you are you a body, a unit, an activity? What? Wh who are you? Yeah, we are. We are not any working group. We are not a unit, but we are part of. Residence, residence assembly, and through all of these different groups coming together, we hope to be the voice of the larger community. So we don't want to be recognized as one group or the other, or uh, we don't, if needed for whatever formalities, we might have to uh, formulate a unit or something. But as such, we, we represent the resident assembly. We are part of residence assembly. Um, I think it was mentioned a little bit in, in the presentation. Uh, so we were asked from the previous process holders of the Dream Moving as the young generation. And we were the four people of the young generation who stepped up. And, um, and so we just took this up and developed it to, until this presentation today. Um, but as as you see, uh, what we showed all the all the roles, all the um, all the roles to pick up to help out include organization, include facilitation. Um, so this is not that we are just standing here and this is our thing. And so it is also part of the invitation. Sorry, uh, maybe I wasn't clear. I wasn't directing myself to you for. I'm, it's wonderful, and I congratulate you. I'm talking about the dream weaving from the time onwards. I'm talking about the whole attempt of finding a livable, sustainable, supported collective thing. Does it have any kind of mandate given to the dream weaver? I mean, when David and Mona and so on, uh, I just don't remember. We don't have, and we like we mentioned a few times, it is a very much an evolving process. So the process that we follow this time is already very different from the from the one that happened in the 2022 Crown Dream Weaving, and the ones before that itself were a very different process because it also varied with the kind of scale that the participation in, and of course not to not to I mean to acknowledge that we are in very different times on ground. So in general, the kind of need of collaborative process in itself is different. So we don't have a mandate to work with in that sense. But yeah, we are welcome to get suggestions if we want to create a mandate. I don't know. I mean, this is something new. We didn't think about it. Maybe if that's the voice of the community, we could look into that. And also to answer Frederick's first question, we didn't want this presentation at all to be a fundraising presentation or a place to do fundraising. First, what we really want is the support at different levels from the community and to present ourselves of where we are because I we're not sure if we really announced anything much before this that we have been working on this for so many months so we really felt that this is not where we want to bring in the funds and the fundraising as an aspect so that was a conscious choice to not do the fundraising at this event I would really like to thank you because um, it was very inspiring and it was very empowering and it felt good to be able to dream and to actually have it um, worded out and transmitted with such a dynamic energy. 
And it's so good to have that space to dream together collectively in these times. So thank you. Let me also express here the wish that I have heard from so many people in so many different times and different occasions. Many of us remember the times when we were building Matri Mandir together. And this has been something that has come up again and again that if we can start working on something with our hands, doing something physical, it will create a beautiful energy that will unite us all. And uh, I'm so glad that you people are heading towards that. I, I, I really congratulate you and looking forward to that wonderful collective, creative energy, a dynamic energy that will start building Auroville. Thank you. So with all those wonderful words, um, we can close now this session of uh, questions and answers. And uh, I'd invite you again to um, visit the tables, engage with those that have uh, chosen to hold space there. And um, thank you all. It was really a pleasure to be part of this presentation. Just to clarify, there will be um, also space here to continue the discussion and engagement around this uh, area right here.